January 21st, 2018. It's game day on opposite sides of the country. One athlete is in California playing for the U.S. national team. The other is in Philadelphia playing for the NFC title. Their entire lives, winning was the only thing until they met each other. You've heard the story of Boy Meets Girl. There's a good job, Julie. There's something about that girl that I need to go sit next to her. They're the only two people in the world when they see each other. But you haven't heard this version. The U.S. wins the 2015 Women's World Cup. The Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions. It's really a unique situation where two athletes can be world class and be each other's biggest fan. Does he have any vices? I just say like, like, just like he just doesn't put his dirty clothes in the hamper. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Before they were the Ertzes, like, oh. the they were just before. Zach and Julie. <laughs> Zach Ertz entered the world first in California on November 10th, 1990. There was a college football game on the TV in the hospital. And honest to God, he was born while the game was on. And it was super easy. 17 months later, in Arizona, on April 6th, 1992, came Julie Johnston. She was a tough delivery. I went from having a six pound baby to a 10 pound baby. So I really had a girl. <laughs> she was big. <laughs> Zach was the oldest of four boys. Where'd they go? There they, here they come. But because we have them. Julie, the younger of two girls. And from the start, their personalities were clearly different. Where are you moping? She's a big personality. She's a lot of fun to be around. His personality is a little bit more shy. She was just funny, even right off the bat. He's a very nice person, but his, he's kind of antisocial. They did have one thing in common, sports. Get it, Mountie. Stop it, now. I kind of just emulated kind of whatever my sister did. She ended up choosing soccer and I was like, okay, well, I want to do that too. And I just love playing. And over the goalie and into the net, Julie Johnston. But their levels of enthusiasm differed. A seventh grade was the first year tackle football, um, and I absolutely hated it. I never wanted to play again. Tore up the eighth grade registration when it came and said, I just don't really like this. When he was going to high school, I encouraged him to play football. I thought it would be good for him to make friends. 400 miles away, Julie was the captain of Arizona's most competitive club team. She was always working hard. She was a goal scorer. Julie was a bruiser. Meanwhile, in the fall of 2005, Zach took his mother's advice and joined his high school football team. He was athletic, but raw, until he came to the attention of a local legend. The athletic director called and said, hey, I've got a, a young kid coming up that's a tight end. He could be a, a heck of a player. That's how former 49ers All-Pro tight end Brent Jones became Zach's personal position coach. This guy was telling me when I was 16 years old that I'm gonna play in the NFL. I'm looking at this guy like, I'm 16, I don't even know if I can play varsity football yet. 
he could. And soon everyone would know it, including top Division I programs. Everybody started realizing, wait a second, this kid can't be covered. Eventually, Zach narrowed down his options to two schools. He really wanted to go to UCLA. And I was pushing really hard for Stanford. Go out there and get the best education that you can while you're playing football for that school. I actually said to him, it's not like you're going to play in the NFL. She said, you got into Stanford, you're going to Stanford. And at the time, I said, okay, you know best. Um, and it was the best decision she ever made. <laughs> Walk down the middle of the field. It's caught. Two, one, touchdown. Zach Ertz. Big athletic. He could catch. You could just start to see the puzzle come together that, that Zach was really wired right. Just 20 minutes down the road, the Santa Clara Broncos had just obtained their most versatile player. Whatever we needed, she did. I played in the midfield, I played up front, I played in the back. I can remember times when she may have played all three positions in one game. Then, during the off season, in February 2012, something happened that had nothing to do with sports. Well, almost nothing. What were you doing at a Stanford baseball game? I just went with friends, and then there was just a seat open next to me. She tells a story where it's a packed stadium, which is false. <laughs> How many uh, open seats were there in the student section? <laughs> it's just because Zach said that there was not. It was pretty full. My truth is that I was zoned in on this girl in the stands, and uh, I just go over there and sit right next to her. He says he was very bold. Very bold. The seat was open. He just sat down. I'm kind of the shy guy. I'll kind of just stay in the corner. But with her, I kind of, I guess something hit me where I needed to exert myself. I think the conversation started like, do you want to share some sunflower seeds or something like that? How did you respond? Oh, yeah, she wanted some. She wanted some sunflower seeds. <laughs> the next day, they started a modern romance. We kind of just were Facebook friends. <laughs> She was texting a lot, and I thought, you know, what's going on here? And Julie never had a serious boyfriend. She told me in high school, she was, I'm married to soccer. <laughs> so I thought, whoa, this guy must really be something for her to pay attention to. NFL scouts were also paying attention. Fires in zone. Ertz hangs on. Oh, my. After a standout junior season, Zach declared for the draft. But that wasn't the only declaration he made. Who said I love you first? I remember I used to always say, I really like you. <laughs> no, you did. I would, because I didn't want to say it, but I was like, I would do it kind of like jokingly. Julie didn't have a car in college, yeah, so I, I had to do all the driving to see her. So one of the days we were hanging out at her place, um, I left the room and then I just came back. And then my door opened, so I look over and it was Zach, and he just came back because he wanted to tell me that he loved me. So you were first? I was. But I really, really liked him first. <laughs> <laughs> April 25th, 2013. It's day one of the NFL draft and Zach is coming home to be with his family and to introduce his new girlfriend. I remember being quite nervous. I've never heard Zach laugh so loud that he's not that social normally, and he was like cracking jokes. But soon, the jokes would stop. Good evening, and welcome everybody to 2013. NFL Draft. 
I felt like I was living and dying with every pick. You know, you want to be a first round guy. Then an opportunity. The 49ers, now led by Zach's former Stanford coach, Jim Harbaugh, were on the clock. We thought, hey, that's a shot. That would be a great situation. I'll still be in California. I'll still be close to you. We were like, oh, wow. Well, could you imagine that working out in the sense of staying in the Bay Area? The San Francisco 49ers select Eric Reed. The first round concludes, and I'm not drafted. And I was not happy um, at all. 24 hours later, Julie was in class as Zach was still waiting anxiously for his name to be called. With the 35th pick in the 2013 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Zach Ertz, tight end, Stanford. What were you thinking? Uh, I mean, I was happy. I was extremely happy, tears of joy. It was emotionally overwhelming. She didn't like respond to any of my calls or anything. And then later I find out that she was like crying because I had to go 3,000 miles away to the East Coast. What's up, coach? How you doing? Good. Congratulations. Thank you very much. When he left for Philly and they said goodbye to each other, I just was like, oh boy, this is so difficult. Where did you guys stand? <laughs> 